In the last chapter, we have introduced ordinal numbers as order types of well-ordered sets and their indexing role. This chapter about ordinal arithmetics may not be so essential. Ordinal addition and multiplication are less usual operations with ordinal numbers than the ordinal union and adding one which we have seen in the last chapter. But I think it's useful to get in touch with ordinals and their indexing meaning before we meet the ordinal omega 1 in the next chapter, which is far more important, but also far less imaginable. We have mentioned ordinal addition in the last chapter when we labeled some infinite ordinals as omega plus 1, omega plus 2 and so on. When we want to sum two ordinals, say omega and 3, we just place one after the other. Well, that is quite simple and natural. However, as ordinals determine ordering, there is also some not so natural behavior, namely order matters. The ordinal omega plus 3 is indeed 3 steps longer than omega. But if we add them in the opposite order, 3 plus omega, we obtain just omega. The three elements got lost in the infinity of omega. We can visualize this as well using the index point of view. Consider two turtles, Gordon and Steve, racing on ordinals. Gordon starts at index 0, but Steve is starting ahead by three steps. Now they begin to run. After one step, Gordon is at index 1, while Steve is at index 3 plus 1, that is 4. It is similar for the second step, the third one, and so on. Even though Gordon is three steps behind Steve all the time, both of them are approaching the same limit ordinal, that is omega. So at the limit step, both turtles jump to index omega. In Steve's case, we can interpret omega as 3 plus omega because he started on index 3, but the current index is the same. From now on, our turtles run one next to each other. So 3 plus any infinite ordinal alpha equals the infinite ordinal alpha. This is in the contrast with the case omega plus 3, which can be seen as follows. Both turtles run next to each other for omega steps, and then Steve makes three more steps. Of course Steve will lead after that no matter how much they traveled at the beginning. From the previous race, we've seen that 3 plus alpha equals alpha for any infinite ordinal alpha. The current setup shows us that alpha plus 3 is certainly greater than alpha. Let's return to the first version and give Steve a bigger advantage now. As you can imagine, starting at index 10 doesn't make much difference, but what if it starts on omega? When Gordon gets to omega, Steve is already gone at index omega plus omega. We denote it simply as omega times 2. When Gordon gets to index omega times 2, Steve is at omega times 3. You can pause the video and think about it. Will Gordon manage to catch Steve? Alright, here is the answer. If we focus just on the yellow bars, which are finite multiples of omega, we translate the current problem to the previous one. Both turtles meet at the supremum of these indices called, reasonably enough, omega times omega. So the answer to our question is this ordinal omega times omega. That brings us to the next topic in this chapter, ordinal multiplication. Take two ordinals say omega and 2. If we want to compute their product, we take the first one as a base and copy it as many times as the second ordinal suggests. That is the same as saying that every point of the second factor, that's 2, was replaced by a copy of the first factor, that's omega. And again, order matters. It was important to write the product in the order omega times 2. If we multiply 2 times omega, we replace every point of the second factor, that is omega, by 2. As in the case of addition, the result is just omega. We can interpret it as a race again. Let's the turtle compete with a rabbit. A rabbit is faster than a turtle. When a turtle moves by one, the rabbit jumps two steps forward. Well, it is a lazy rabbit, but still faster than a turtle. They both start at index zero. After one step, the turtle is at index 1, the rabbit at index 2. After three steps, the turtle is at index 3, the rabbit at index 6. And the race continues. 
The rabbit runs, runs, two times faster, but we can see that they are both just approaching the same limit index omega, so they are both reaching index omega simultaneously. That is represented by the fact that two times omega equals omega. It just doesn't hold for any infinite ordinal alpha now. At the next successor step, the rabbit escapes again, and he runs ahead until the turtle catches him at the second limit step omega times two. So two times alpha equals alpha not for all infinite ordinals, but just for all limit ordinals alpha. Multiplication is similar to addition in the sense that the second factor in multiplication can remain the same, but the first factor gets bigger unless it's multiplied by zero or one. Let's interpret the reverse product omega times two. It corresponds to a superhero, say Achilles, capable of jumps of length omega. He starts at index omega times zero, his first jump brings him to index omega times one, the second one to index omega times two. Of course Achilles gets further by his second step. But what if we summon the turtle against Achilles? Has the turtle a chance of catching him again? Is there a non-zero ordinal alpha equal to omega times alpha? Let's see. After one step, the turtle is at index one and Achilles is already at index omega. The turtle needs omega more steps to get to index omega, but Achilles is already away at index omega times omega by the time. Let's denote it omega squared. And we continue. As the turtle is too far behind Achilles, let us picture it in a separate row. After the next omega steps, the turtle gets to index omega times two, while Achilles gets to omega squared times two. This might be a good moment for pausing the video and pondering the question. Can on earth, or rather on ordinals, the turtle catch Achilles? All right, let's answer the question and see the process in the big picture. After the next step, the turtle is at omega times two plus one, whereas Achilles at omega squared times two plus omega. After the next omega steps, the turtle is at omega times three, Achilles at omega squared times three. The turtle needs omega squared more steps to get to omega squared, and Achilles gets to omega cubed by that time. At every step, Achilles is exactly one round ahead of the turtle. When the turtle gets to index omega cubed, Achilles is already at omega to the fourth. However, you probably can guess where this leads to. All these finite powers of omega have their supremum called, reasonably enough, omega to the power of omega. Both of the racers are simultaneously approaching this supremum. So it is the index where the turtle catches up with Achilles. From the type order view of ordinals, omega to the power of omega is just the spiral itself. And it makes sense that omega times our spiral is still the same ordinal because replacing every point here by omega represents zooming into that infinite spiral. We are not going to go into details of ordinal powers. The definition is more technical and less visual. Just note that it is perfectly fine to define the powers of omega by transfinite recursion. The limit step is the supremum, the ordinal union, and the successor step is multiplication by omega from the right. The order is important. We already know that omega times omega to the power of omega is still the same ordinal. So if we defined it using multiplication from the left, we would get stuck at the dead ordinal number. On the other hand, multiplication from the right guarantees us to reach higher and higher ordinals. At the end of this chapter, let's compute the cardinality of omega to the power of omega. The cardinality of omega is aleph zero. The cardinality of omega squared is aleph zero times aleph zero, that is aleph zero as we know from chapter two. Similarly, the cardinality of omega cubed is aleph zero times aleph zero, which is still aleph zero, and so on. Every finite ordinal power is countable. Finally, omega to the power of omega is just the ordinal union of countably many countable ordinals. Countable union of countable sets is countable. So also omega to the power of omega is countable, in particular of size alpha zero. Apparently, it is not easy to construct an uncountable ordinal number. In fact, the ordinal power doesn't help it either. Nevertheless, we will explore one uncountable ordinal number in the next chapter. See you then.